what is light first of all let me establish this truth that physically when you talk about light you are talking about light as one of the natural uh, components of this realm that is an element of the supernatural light is one of the natural elements that can help you interface with the supernatural there are about four to five of them there is the earth it is natural isn't it but through the earth a man can interface with the supernatural is that true good water is there wind is there as i'm speaking now my voice is carried to your ears through the element of wind isn't it imparting into you a supernatural experience and a supernatural deposit so i'm taking advantage of one of the natural elements is that true another element is light and we want to discuss it light is god's word light is god's word psalms 105 verse 130 verse 119 i beg to say verse 105 and verse 130 it says your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path i'll come back to this verse verse 130 the entrance of your word gives light so the word is light isn't it and when the word of god comes to a man light has come to that man it gives understanding it's showing us one of the components of light that i would this i will talk about further it gives understanding to the simple because understanding is one of the components of light light is first of all the word of god genesis chapter 1 verse 3 the bible says and god said the first thing we saw in the creation story was light and god said it was his word let there be and there was so the word of god is light now back to psalms 119 verse 105 your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path it shows you two um two modes of operation of the word of god as light of course you know that light gives visibility is that true light gives manifestation light makes things visible makes things manifest isn't it there are other things that light can do light attracts darkness has never attracted is that true uh -huh. it's light that attracts so the amount of light you have from the word of god will determine the physical and spiritual forces that are attracted to you per time this thing we call favor it can be attracted and it can stay money has wings it can fly not favor are you hearing me there's no need to be favored today and the next time you see it is in march no there is something you can know there is an amount of light of illumination you can carry by the word of god that makes it a permanent resident surely goodness and mercy shall follow me how many times all the days in my life two modes of operations we see here first of all we see the word as a lamp and as light well both is the same thing but we see light here first of all to mean guidance your word is a lamp to my feet if you have ever held a lantern the light that a lantern carries is not um is not divergent as it were let me use a little of physics here it's not divergent the rays don't go out is convergent so the light of a lantern or a lamp can only allow you to see what is around it now that speaks of guidance part time part time when the spirit of god guides you or the word of god guides you part time in other words 
guidance for a particular season. It doesn't show you tomorrow. It just shows you what to do today. It shows you how to live today. It shows you how to survive today. That's guidance. Then it says, and a light to my path. That speaks of the future. That is vision now. So this has to do with direction. So you see the word of God operating in two forms. First of all, as a guide. And then to give direction. Guiding you every day and directing your paths as touching God's future for you. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace are not of evil. To give you what? A future direction. When those thoughts are revealed to you, light has come. It gives you a future. It gives you direction. It tells you what to do about this issue next year. It tells you how the next 10 years will be. You will not move by pressure from people. You know, some of us are like that. People just start saying, when are you getting married? When are you getting married? Ah, you're under pressure then. You just jump and get married. And you did not decide what you will do so that you can give food to somebody's daughter. Now you are married three months later. There's no food in the house. God is not a God of pressure group. Are you hearing me? In as much as people are pressured, even me, I can be one of the people pressurizing you. Amen. Wait for direction first. When did God speak to me about this ministry? 2013. When did the name come? 2016. When did we start? 2018. When did we start full operational service? 2020. But it came before. Because God knew that we will encounter all kinds of challenges on the way. So be armed with this word of direction. I would have jumped out that 2013 and said, God has called me, let's go. No. There was a word to guide. That one was for direction. But there was a word that guided and said, wait till the time. He said, for the vision is for an appointed time. Is that true? This night, may God open your eyes about the future. Amen. I don't know who I'm talking to, but may God open your eyes and bring you clarity Amen. as touching your future. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So light is the word of God. Ecclesiastes 11 verse 7. Very wonderful scripture. Give it to us in King James translation. Wonderful scripture. Keep it at the back of your mind this year. It said, truly, the light is sweet. Light is what? Sweet. And a pleasant thing it is for the eyes to behold the sun. Because the sun is the brightest luminary in our solar system. Is that true? In our galaxy, the sun is the brightest luminary. Which is a prophetic symbol of the word of God. The Bible says in Psalms 84, I think it's verse 10. The Lord God is a sun and a shield. John chapter 1, in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was God. So if the word of God is God, when the Bible says the Lord God is a sun and a shield, it means that the word of God is what? A sun. In other words, it is the brightest form of, uh, of, of light, of illumination that you can carry. Visions are good. Thank God for visions. But there's nothing as sure as the word of God. He said we have a more sure word of prophecy. When God guides you by his word, you can never miss your way. You can never miss your way. It is the word of God that brings conviction in a man. Even when everybody is saying a different thing. It is the word that God has spoken. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded. That means that light as touching the word of God operates in two ways. Or, you know, reveals itself in two ways. It comes firstly as the word of God. The written word of God that we have. You can study the scriptures. You can study God's word, the Bible. And based on what you see God did, how he dealt with people, you can pick principles from that that will order your life aright. However, the surer one is the second. 
the voice of the Spirit of God. It's one thing to be led by the Word of God, the written Word of God. It's another thing to be led by the voice of the Spirit. That is the spoken Word of God. That one is surer as touching life and destiny. Man shall not live by, every, by bread alone, but by every word, not that is written, but that proceeds. 1 John chapter 1 verse 5, the Bible tells us that God is light. He said this is the message that we have heard. And we have passed on to you that God is light. Not only is God light, God is the source of light. James chapter 1 verse 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift cometh from above, from the Father of light. The word Father there is the word Abba. It means source. Source. The source of light. The source of illumination. He is the source of light. He is the light of men. He, God, is also the light of men. John chapter 1 verse 4. In him was life and that life was the light of men. John chapter 9, 4, 9 I beg to say. Okay, verse 9 rather. Give us verse 9 of John chapter 1. Verse 9. Do you have the Passion's translation? The Passion's translation. Look for it if you don't have, no problem. He said, that was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. The light there to every man speaks of identity. So the true light which is God gave light which is identity to every individual that came on earth. That's why we have over 8 billion people. But no one has the same destiny. In case you don't know, know it today. No one is like you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So stop copying anybody. That is the true light that gives light. God that gives identity to everyone. So an encounter with God is firstly an encounter with your programmed and original identity. Do you hear what I'm saying? Because he is the light of men. You don't have it, the passion translation. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get it someday. He is also called the light of the world. John chapter 9 verse 5. You see, as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. Now write this down. Ignorance is the knowledge that brings fear. Revelation is the knowledge that brings faith. Write it down. In fact, put it on your status right now. Say amen. amen. Write it down, put it on your status. But make sure you put the hashtag with my name. If not, I appear with Cain this night in your dream. Amen. So when I say that, some of you are laughing. Don't worry, very soon you will see it. You know, I used to say that if there will be an accident, I will disappear. Is that true? And many of you think I'm joking. Let me show you a scripture. To tell you that I know what I'm saying. Colossians chapter 3 verse 4. He says, And when Christ, who is your light, appears, you shall appear with him in glory. You shall appear. If you can appear, that means you can disappear. Yes. Oh, come on, talk to me now. So if any accident will happen while I'm in the car, if it will happen, and I will disappear. Look for how to hold me. I will appear in my house. This is free of charge by the light of God's word. This is not juju. You know people go and do juju. They travel to Maraman, they give them charm. They cut their hand, put it in their... That anytime you are going to be in an accident or an attack, you disappear. Right? No, you don't have to do that charm. I'm showing you how cheap it can come. Many years ago, my spiritual father was having a retreat in his small house. Then he was still single. And in the dead of the night, while he was praying, somebody came and tore his net and pointed a gun through the window at him. I said, bring your wallet and every money with you. He told the person, no. The person said, bring your wallet or I will shoot you. He told the person, shoot now. Do dead men die twice? True story. And then the hand was withdrawn gradually and went away. Oh, my Akaya Namakaya. You need to carry, you need to walk with flood light 
by the spirit of God in your life because there are situations that will come there are portions in life there are times seasons in life where you will be faced with darkness you need to carry sufficient life light that will deliver you and the people around you he says shoot do dead men die twice <laughs> ignorance is the knowledge that brings fear revelation is what the knowledge that brings faith i think we can stop here let's continue next week amen abby ephesians 5 verse 13 to 14 ephesians 5 verse 13 to 14 he says, but all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is what? Light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Christ will give you light. We know that light is the word of God. But let's look at the composition of light. Light is the expression of what I call a threefold chord. A threefold chord. You remember in Ecclesiastes it says two can withstand in a threefold chord. It's not easily broken, isn't it? So there are three things that come together to make light in context of our teaching today. You need these three things to find expression in your life to be fully ascertained. That you are walking in light. What are these three? Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. If we agree that light has the capacity to deliver, it has the capacity to enthrone, it has the capacity to empower a man to walk in dominion, then we need to understand what it is composed of. Let's not treat it as an abstract subject. Let's treat it as something we can understand. Three things coming together that makes for the expression of light. Wisdom, knowledge, and what? Understanding. Knowledge is information acquired. Knowledge is information that you acquire or you discover. Understanding is the ability to comprehend that which is known. It's one thing to know a thing, it's another thing to understand what you know. In Acts chapter 8, when Philip was walking by the desert, the road by the desert, and he met the utopian eunuch, here was what he asked the man. The man was reading the book of Isaiah chapter 53. Here was what Philip asked the man. He didn't ask him, do you know what you are reading? He said, understandest that what thou readest you can know a thing and not understand some of you used to cram before exams if you are like that can you wave give god a wave look at them i know now you are preparing to cram your way through your masters and your phd no problem you can do that but when it comes to the word of god don't cram it to know it Understanding is comprehension. It's coming in terms with the facts that you have acquired, that you have received. One of the things that is lacking in the body of Christ is understanding. Understanding. In fact, even in prayer, I say you can pray in the spirit and yet your understanding is unfruitful. It means your mind. While wisdom... is the application of what you have known and what you have understood when you understand something you put it to work that is called wisdom when you apply it so you can't claim to have wisdom if there are no works around you to justify you isn't it isn't it that's why jesus said wisdom is justified by her children by her works so there are truths that you know from the word of God do you understand it bring you all the tithes you know that scripture isn't it 
do you understand it and if you have understood it are you doing it wisdom is in the doing now when you have these three forces working in your life then you are working in light knowledge acquired comprehension attained that is understanding and then wisdom applied it projects you as a man of light and you walk in a life that is nothing short of success and dominion the bible says in isaiah chapter 33 verse 6 wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times are you seeing the composition of light now playing out it brings stability when you have these forces at work in your life proverbs chapter 2 verse 6 what does he say he said for the lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding wisdom is always direction inclined it's always directive so when the bible says the lord giveth wisdom he's showing you what to do so that in doing it you will profit are you hearing me the Bible says the Lord giveth wisdom and out of his mouth knowledge and understanding. You see the three forces coming together in this verse. This is light. When you have received knowledge from God that you understand and the wisdom in applying it. Listen, if I write down for you all the ingredients that you can use to prepare fried rice and give it to you does it mean that you will prepare fried rice you will prepare another rice because it's not just in the ingredients there's also something called the recipe isn't it good so you receive the knowledge of the ingredients that can make for fried rice you need to understand these ingredients and then in application you need to know when to apply them because you can miss one thing and it becomes colored rice not fried rice brothers and sisters that is how light works so the knowledge of the word that comes from god to you that is understood the bible says the entrance of his word giveth understanding so when the word of god comes to you listen you can read it from the bible that's knowledge and you may not understand it you will understand when the spirit of god in you explains what you are reading sometimes he can explain it by bringing it out of you again you have read it before then he brought that scripture out and then it's like the scripture opens up is that not what you say and he begins to show you the knots the dots begin to connect sometimes it your understanding will be opened just by one word in that verse for instance i've always read that scripture when the enemy comes in like a flood the spirit of god will raise a standard against him and i used to think that the enemy was the flood when the enemy comes in like a flood but then one day the holy ghost made me read it in another translation and he said when the enemy comes in comma like a flood and the holy spirit told me if you understand simile the use of like and as you will understand that just the way when it is flooding it in a place it the water level rises above the ground surface that's how the holy spirit will rise above the attacks of the enemy in your life how else would you explain when he say that he will deliver you from arrows that fly by day and the terror by night he raises a standard and you know what let me give you another understanding he just gave me now sometimes the standard is he lifts you above the circumstances nay in all these things we are more in all these things so you see the man laughing when they told him that his mother had an accident in the village. He has been risen above. Understanding, knowledge, and wisdom. Mm. 
We rule by light. We rule by light. Oh, by the way, another scripture to support Proverbs chapter 2 verse 6. You know, we're talking about the composition of light. Another scripture to support that is Colossians 1 verse 9. That you will be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. You see the three forces there. So that's another scripture. We rule by light. John chapter 1 verse 5. Verse 5 rather. And the light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehends it not. It shows you the superiority of light there. Genesis 1, 16 to 18. Let me show you something. Let me show you how we rule by light. When you have a good command of God's knowledge, wisdom and understanding around your life. This is how you will rule. Let me show you. Then God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. And to rule over the day and over the night. Even the night is, is because there's darkness, isn't it? So even in the midst of darkness, God apportioned light to still rule. So God never planned the universe without with darkness. And to divide the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good. Now let me show you how we rule. The Bible says he made two great lights. Hear this. And then the Bible also says, it, it speaks of the, the light it, it, it created. The two great lights there were the sun and the moon. The moon is the lesser light. It is because science have explained to us that the moon does not have lumin, uh, you know, light in itself. The, loom, the moon is only a luminous body. It is the light that it attracts or it receives from the sun that it diffracts or reflects. So the sun rules the day while the moon at night. At night when you have darkness, the moon is still shining. So there is still light. Now in a night where there is no moon, there are still stars to keep the, galaps, the galaxy luminous. Is that true? That means that regardless of the season that you are in, there must be light. In the day, there is light everywhere. That means when things are good, when things are okay, you are still ruling. That's dominion. But in the night, what I call the night seasons of life, the night seasons of life are when things are not good. When you are confessing the I am confession and you are seeing another thing in your life. Those are what I call night seasons. Job 35 verse 10, he says, Where is God, my God, who giveth songs in the night times? I don't know if it's New King James that says night seasons. So it's speaking about a figurative moment of life when circumstances seem to work against you. Even in that, God still leaves you with a portion of light. That light can be in a song. Even in my darkest now. Through the sorrows and the pain, I will sing. How many of you know that song? I will praise, lift my hands to honor you, because of what is true. I will sing. I will sing. I will praise. I will praise. Even in my darkest night. To the sorrows and the pain. What will you do? I will sing. I will pray. I will pray. If my hands to honor you. my hands to honor you. Because your word is true. Because your word is true. I will sing. An example is a scripture. Where Job said, For I know that my Redeemer liveth. And he shall stand at last on the earth. He said, even if this king is destroyed, yet in my flesh, I will see. If the skin has been destroyed, which flesh are you? How? He's saying that I know that there is resurrection after death. 
Sometimes the light in your season, your down times of life can even just be a song. One song. One song for a whole week. Just that one song. Everywhere you go, disappointment after disappointment. And every time you are faced with a disappointment, the song will rise inside of you. You go to pray. Instead of God to come and then distribute cash so that the hunger can go, that song comes out again. Have you been in a situation in your life where you held on one song or one prophecy for three years, for two years, for five years? No, this is our generation, microwave. That's why we don't have men and women of stature. We don't have strong Christians. We don't have people with stamina. God cannot, co God cannot commit a ministry to nations, to you. Because little things make you afraid. You fall. It's you that say you want to speak to nations. Are you ready for criticism? That comes with a man that is influencing nations. You want all the thousands of likes. That's good. But what of if the thousands of likes come because you are criticized for something you didn't do? Will you be able to stand that period? That's why in all honesty, in all honesty ministry is not a profession. It's a calling. You can't be flash. God cannot flash you. It's either I call you or he didn't call you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because your life will never look like the normal. Put that as hashtag. When you go back to your hostel or when you go back home to your colleagues, tell them, God, call me. God, no flash me. That's the reason why you are going through what you are going through. Because he called you. If he didn't call you, you will not go through this. Healing evangelists. And you are the one suffering from sickness. There's a grace upon your life for people to be fruitful. Yet you don't have children. It's because he called you. That's why you are going through all this mess. But here is another light that will bring you out of this misery. It says, faithful is he who has called you, for he will do it. Hallelujah. Do you know what it means to, for a man to call himself faithful? In, I've heard all kinds of names. I've never heard anybody give his child faithful. It means that regardless of what is happening around you, what he said to you, he will do it. The Bible says this was why Abraham was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Because he knew that what God has said, he was able to perform. Even in your night seasons, there is light. So it is with light that we rule, and that's dominion. There will be points in this year where it will not be sweet, or I hope you know. There will be points in this year where it will not be pleasant. But when you have light, 